Hey guys, uh, Connor Kokona here, uh, and today I um, I finished the Demon Slayer manga. Well, not really today, I finished it a couple days ago, uh, but one, I kind of wanted to produce more thoughts about it, have more time to think and reflect about it, so that way when I make a video it's not like just first impression, like I just finished, like here are like my really like random raw thoughts, I wanted to more think about it, as well as I wanted to wait until the... Um, Entertainment District arc finished up and I was gonna watch that before I made this but ultimately uh, It's the Monday after basically so it's been done for a day and everything. I still haven't watched it I'm going to watch it um, But I also I just ended up recording this because I was like I don't really need to watch it to get all of my thoughts on it because at the end of the day I I just read the manga so I know what happens, so it's not like I'm missing out on anything really. Um, but just a quick note to talk about the Entertainment District art. The main purpose of this video is gonna be talking about the manga, but I still wanted to just uh, put in my word since the Demon Slayer anime also just wrapped up its uh, second season. Uh, Entertainment District art was really good. I think UFO Table is really taking what is a good manga and making it an amazing anime. Their uh, animation brings it up a level, the story continues to be consistently good, all that fun stuff. Just wanna get that out of the way. But without further ado, we are going to get into the actual opinions on the manga. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about with the manga is what I consider to be the pros of the manga. Um, I don't want to start off negative, although there is going to be some negatives for sure. So the first pro, to get it just out of the way, it was a very good manga. Um, I think the story is not necessarily the most most fantastic and most original thing it's not like looking at like a 10 out of 10 fantastic manga it's not something that's blowing my mind like aot or chainsaw man but instead it's just a really typical formula but refined to be really enjoyable ultimately i'm a sucker for sword play in the first place i love sword fights um, that's why Star Wars is one of my favorite, uh, an or not anime, uh, it, there is an anime, but one of my favorite franchises in general is just because I love the fact that it's a science fiction with swords because I'm not nearly as interested in guns, uh, at least whenever it comes to media. Media, I think, is fun for the fact that it has swords, and swords are kind of no longer useful in real life. They're just not practical for actual warfare, so it's cool to get to see swords being used to their fullest ability, not just for sport. So, of course, I like Demon Slayer Swordplay. It's fantastic. And the actual story, again, is fantastic. I think Tanjiro is a good protagonist. I think sometimes they overplay, for sure, his whole, like, kindness type of thingy, but he is a really enjoyable uh, protagonist. And then all the supporting cast is enjoyable, of course. Nezuko's adorable. There's not a ton to her character, but there's enough to her. It's like, it works. She's kind of just along for the ride in the first place. It's about Tanjiro taking her to try to cure her, so it makes sense she's not gonna have a big play. Inosuke, love my boy Inosuke, best character, easily, not even close. He, I do have a bias because he's voiced by my favorite male voice actor, I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, but even then, when I read the manga, he's fantastic, I absolutely adore him. Zenitsu, I don't like Zenitsu. Um, but I feel like I should still mention that. Um, but Zenitsu's fight is one of the best uh, fights and has the best manga panel in the entire manga. When he takes on um, the upper rank six, that is the one where he does his seventh form um, and decapitates the upper rank six. That is my favorite manga panel in all of Demon Slayer. I think that's the most gorgeous manga panel. It looks the best. And it, there's something about him being a complete bitch and not being likable all of a sudden to go Giga Chad mode that I do like, although I didn't like later that he just instantly went back to being little bitch mode right after that. Um, but yeah, to talk about more of my favorites, um, my favorite character, as I said in those days, but my favorite fight is undoubtedly in this case fight with um, Kanoe against the uh, upper rank two. I, I like Shinobu, she's my favorite Hashira, another favorite to say right there. Um, and it, I was very sad to see Shinobu die, although I did accidentally get spoiled whenever I was looking up information about uh, her character for something else. It's one of those things where you type into Google, it's like, this character's name, and you instantly get dead. And it's like, fuck. Same thing happened with me for, um, uh, spoilers on Attack on Titan, I guess, right here. Uh, although the season where it happens is already out, but whenever Sasha died, I did that same thing on accident where I googled Sasha's name while I was binging AOT, uh, and it said she died. And I was like, what the fuck? What a fucked up day. Um, but yeah, Shinobu dying was very sad for me, but being able to see Inosuke and Kanoe work together, and even though Inosuke was relatively separate from Shinobu, 
the fact that they still worked to tie him together with Shinobu and have this emotional thing. Of course, it was kind of, it ended up being like, oh, no, it's not necessarily Shinobu. It's also, like, his mom. But the, he still definitely had an emotional attachment to Shinobu from the time in Shinobu's palace. And, of course, Kanoe had a massive attachment to Shinobu because she took her in. Everything about it was great. My favorite part about the fight, undoubtedly, though, is the end and the way that they ended up killing her. The fact that it had Kanoe um, slashing the head but not being strong enough and not being able to get through the head. And Inosuke hitting her sword with his swords to finish it off. That is phenomenal. That is, like, one of the best ways I could have thought of doing teamwork in a sword fight. I just loved it. It was, it just felt like such a good moment. These characters, I like how they could take two characters that aren't inherently, like, super connected and make a really good, impactful moment with them. That was some of the best writing in the manga, undoubtedly. Another fight that I just, I can't not mention um, is the fight against the upper rank one. Upper rank one, the best demon. Not even close. Coolest backstory. I, his moon bending though, or not moon bending, <laughs> this is an avatar. His moon breathing style is whatever. I'm not a huge fan of the moon breathing style. It just was kind of stupid. It just looked like normal slashing, but then with moons on it. But the actual demon himself was like a giga chat of demons. He was just a fucking menace out there. I did really think that he was the original um, breather, the original sun breather that got converted into a demon. That was my my theory for a long time, but seeing it was the twin brother, I wasn't necessarily far off, but I think he did that, the author honestly did that intentionally as a subversion so that you would think it was one way and then it would end up being the other, which again, I think that's honestly good writing um, because it's one that makes sense, but you know, also can catch you off guard. But the fight of him versus, I can't remember all their names. I'm not good with Japanese names, but against like, it was the Wind Hashira, the Stone Hashira, um, the Wind Hashira's little brother, and the Mist Hashira, which by the way, uh, Mist Breathing was my favorite uh, breathing style from it. They were all fantastic, undoubtedly. And then one final thing to talk about for fighting, uh, I really enjoyed the final fight against Muzan, the fact that they could make something that lasted that long, interesting, and being able to kind of see how all of Tanjiro's past and present played together, how his family lineage almost led up to this moment. Um, it was really interesting. But to kind of segue into the cons, one of the things I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that his lineage did kind of play an important part into it and the fact that his, you know, forefathers were the ones that knew the original Sun Breather and were passing down the techniques and it was just set up for him to kind of be able to fight him. Um, I was kind of hoping Tanjiro could be something of like a Peter Parker to where, uh, you know, he could really be anyone or anything. It's just that kindness and that sense of responsibility that make Tanjiro special, not really that he came from a special family. Which again, you know, he said multiple times he comes from a ch family of charcoal sellers, so he's not inherently special like that, but there's something about it being passed down rather than him just being able to learn it because, you know, he's just, you know, special in the fact that he's got that kindness and that, or some like attachment through something. I feel like they could have done it a little better. Also, another con from the Muzan fight, um, I am not a huge fan of the fact that Tanjiro turned into a demon. I felt like it was completely unnecessary, and especially the part that felt unnecessary is that he became like a demon that was attacking all of his friends. That just doesn't feel right for Tanjiro's character. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like Tanjiro would just be so inherently good-hearted that even turn into a demon his body wouldn't even let him attack other people I think it'd make much more sense if like once he gets turned into a demon he basically heals but goes into like a comatose state where he's kind of and then we could just see the inner dialogue of between him and Muzan of Muzan saying like I need you to pass down you know my thoughts and my will and all that kind of stuff you need to be the next one and then Tanjiro from like step one's like nah dude what the fuck I'm not interested in that I'm gonna go back to my homies now it was just kind of like unnecessary feeling and just tacked on there i really didn't want it um tanjiro was a really cool looking demon undoubtedly but just not a necessary demon. another thing that i was not a fan of was that final chapter that final chapter was kind of fucking stupid i'm not gonna lie that's one of those things where it's neat when you attach like a chapter of that that's like an extra bonus chapter that's not like an official part of the story. It's kind of like, here, we're just having a little fun. Look at this reincarnation shit. This could be neat. Uh, but the fact that that whole reincarnation thing seemed to be very like, like just a genuine part of the story. It's not just a fun little extra chapter to mess around. Like it's the actual continuation of sorts. That was, that was dumb. Um, and especially like with some of them, it was just kind of like stupid in a way. Um, like the, the Snake Ashira and the Love Ashira. 
Um, they obviously never had kids or even really had relatives that would pass down that whole thing. I know it's reincarnation, so it doesn't have to necessarily be their kids, but either way, it was just kind of, kind of stupid. I, I just can't, I can't be a fan of that. And it's fun when you throw those kind of things in like a joke or just kind of something for the fans to enjoy. But the fact that it's an official chapter, meaning it's like an official part of the story, that's what I'm not a fan of. But overall, I don't want to go too big on the con list. There's more that I can nitpick individual characters I'm not a huge fan of. Fuck Zenitsu. He was only a good character once. Um, yeah, I could keep going on about goods and bads, but that's just kind of like a lot of the general thoughts. Um, my, my original plan when I was reading this manga, I was going to wait until the Entertainment District arc finished. I was going to wait a little bit and then start going through it because I did buy the box set back in like October when it came out. But ultimately, something spurred in me. Um, I had a, a commenter on one of my videos, uh, my manga tour collection video, basically said, hey, you should really read Demon Slayer. It's really good. And it's already been something that's been bouncing in my head to where ultimately I'm like, you know what? I haven't been reading very much uh, physical manga. I've been mostly doing digital. Let me just take the plunge and read some physical. And I really enjoyed it. So... Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. This is kind of a haphazardly done one. I had a different plan for this week for a video, but my video ideas are kind of getting fucked by like shipping and stuff like that. So ultimately this is what it is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed anyways, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.